You might hear a tale of two halves thrown around a lot. This was the quintessential tale of two halves. Uh, if you're looking to know what that what that looks like, if you want to know what the textbook definition of tale of two halves is, go watch Arkansas play Abilene Christian as the Razorbacks defeat Abilene Christian by a score of 83 to 73. This is Arkansas basketball recap. I'm Dana Price. That's Jacob Price. We're going to break it all down. I mean, the first half was horrific in this game. I mean, yeah. I was mm-hmm. I was preparing myself, whether we won or lost in that first half, to just be like, like the the opening was just going to be like, we're not a good basketball team. That's what it is. That's what it is. We're just not. We're just not good. Uh, because that first half, we were not a good basketball team. And what's weird, well, they, like our defense, even though they didn't score a ton, our defense was not. It was. It was the same thing over again. It was like, man, these guys are one. Are they are scoring, and they're ahead. But also, what happened to our offense? Like we can't score anything. But and and also, they should be up even more. They've missed a bunch of layups and some wide open. Like they're get everybody's getting so many open shots, and then on the set at the same time, we're not scoring. Yeah, uh, the, 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 ball, felt- the ball was sticking. The, the I mean, it was, the offense was horrible. The defense was horrible. I saw a guy that was like weighed, you know, two hundred and sixty pounds, like just take Brazil straight off the dribble. Uh, I mean, just crazy stuff, dude. I was like, what's happening right now? Uh, what's weird about it though is, and we're down nine, I think, at or at the, at half, whatever. Uh, what's weird is for the first time, really, maybe since the Duke game, I leave feeling more optimistic than I have in the past because I think, and we'll see what Must does, but I think I saw it. I, I think Must like mm-hmm. has a, he he found a thing, and um, it's not like brilliant or no one's ever done it before, but. That thing is two things. One, and there's going to be teams where this is going to be difficult to to do this against, but it does seem that maybe what we need to do is have four guard slash wings on the floor and one big. That the two bigs slow, like the offense, the offense doesn't work. It slows it down. The ball sticks. It's not fast enough. Uh, That was, I mean, it just looked, it looked so much better. Um, and by mm-hmm. the way, like you say you're going small, you're not going tiny. I mean, you still got Mark and Devo, and you know, you have guys out there that, and Devo is the kind of guy that can guard multiple positions, so can Mark. But when they did that, when they had that lineup of Menningfield, you know, Battle, Devo, Mark, and Lawson out there, um, it was a lot better, dude. Like the offense looked better. And here's the thing the defense was better because. You had less big guys to get trapped in switches that are mm-hmm. not advantageous. And so the perimeter defense was much better when you had that group out there. Um, another part of that was, and uh, I think Tremont Mark's going to be player of the game. He's going to get the game ball and all that. But honorable mention, uh, part of it was Menifield running the point guard. I mean, this is how his second game, he plays the entire second half. It was better with him on the floor because he pushed the pace. He got, he was getting to the teeth of the defense. He's, he's got more juice, more energy. He is faster than everybody else on the team. Um, I thought like that, I think that that could probably only get better. I mean, that's game number two for him, you know, and, and it does seem, unfortunately uh, for L I don't know how how many feels not your starting point guard. I don't. He's got to be because defensively he's way better. I mean, I, many yeah, field I mean, goes. Even... Yeah, not only that, but like he rebounds. He's he's the smallest guy on the team, but like you know, many field he goes. His eleven points. He's four of eight. Uh, he gets you know gets six rebounds. Uh, yeah, dude. Like he he he. he it was going small, and it was also just like, also. I think I think he made a big difference. Yeah, I mean, they also they they because you know Menafield played the first half too. 
Um, but all those guys, they got in the zone for a brief period of time. And we have been not, I mean, the guys have not been flowing. Everything feels forced and mechanical and clunky. And all that you saw was whatever, for whatever reason. And I think Manifield was the catalyst, but they just had about a seven minute stretch where they got playing basketball back to where it's fun. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like where they were, they were flowing and, um, really that that's part of the problem with the team is like they are all kind of gripping and i think it's because they are like having their weaknesses as players pointed out to them and it's it is kind of you know breaking down their confidence to some degree because everybody's yeah. gripping because also because the positions haven't been you know we're, we're we're pretty late into the season and it's clear that i mean at least from when you watch the first half that must still has kind of no idea who the main guys are, you know what I mean? I mean, with the exception of a few roles, obviously. Hmm. But I mean, on all sides, big guys, I mean, little guys, he's pl- he's trying to figure it out. And that lack of certainty just makes everybody kind of, you know, everybody's still interviewing for their job and they're all nervous. And there was a brief moment where that kind of went away and they all started playing more f- loose Unfortunately, they're going to have to figure out how to do that in longer and more sustained or at least more often because that happens a lot where teams, you know, go on a two minute thing and the three minute thing here there. But they've got to spend more percentage of the game in that position where they're flowing. I mean, I don't care if it's in one minute increments, 10 times a game or 10 minute increments, two times a game, but they've got to be flowing and having fun and feeling each other a lot more. Hey, Paul, one of the things you need, when that started the, to happen, you could well, just tell like we haven't seen that very much this season since like the first couple of games because as you saw, it's like oh yeah, I remember remember when everything didn't look so mechanical like when guys are just yeah. falling. Well, one of the things you need for that to happen is you need to have guys have to know what the lineup is. They have to know what the role is. You have to have that sort of rotation and stuff figured out a little bit more than we have. And I, and I, and I it's, it is a chicken and the egg thing, right? Um, to, you got to have like the, the roster and the rotation figured out so you can get some of that stuff going. But to get some of that stuff going, you also have to figure out the roster and, and like you're like, I don't, how do you do, but you can't do both of these things, uh, at the same time. And so, uh, it, you know, for me, I mean, I, I I have to go back and look, but once that roster was in there, uh, it he never took it out. He switched the big man in and out, like so. Lawson played, and then Graham mm-hmm. played, and I think Mitchell played, and he kind of rotated that big man thing. But he didn't take the rest of those guys. I mean, they played the last, I mean, what eighteen minutes of the game, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I don't know, dude. Like if I must. I would when I go play when I go play in a week, uh, my starting lineup I don't care like my starting lineup is Menefield, Battle, Devo, uh, Mark, and Lawson. That's who I'm start. I'm that's who I'm starting. I'm just gonna be like I'm just gonna let me just roll that out there again. And see, I mean I know I know it sounds crazy. Like wait, well, you're not gonna start Brazil? No, I'm not. Like I, I'm gonna roll that out there and see. I'm gonna play him. Mm-hmm. I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate all this stuff in. But uh, no, I'm just going to roll it out there and see again. Yeah, I mean, dude, that game next week scares me. And those guys, I mean, I, I wish we, I wish we, I mean, what, what sounds stupid, but we need another, it feels like we still need another two or three games of lightweights to figure our own game out before we hit the big time. Mm-hmm. Um, not that we necessarily will or have, but yeah, I mean, after this game. I mean, well, it's, here's, here's, it's, here's a question like for you. Do you feel like the sort of like, hey, we're we're not going to have Brazil and Lawson or Brazil and Mitchell or Graham and Lawson or whatever you whatever the combination is, we we can't we're not going to have them on the floor at the same time. Do you feel like that's something that worked against this team, but is that doesn't translate to other teams, or do you feel like no, that actually the offense is going to works better that way, and the defense, the perimeter defense is better because you don't have the switches and stuff. I 
I tend to believe that, I mean, it's, it, it won't like perfectly map onto every opponent, but I looking at it and just knowing what I know about basketball, uh, I think that that's worth trying against kind yeah, of anybody. I, I agree. I mean, I, I think, it, I think that kind of a lineup is a little bit like playing a zone defense, you know, like, if you're Syracuse and you play, say you play a really, really excellent zone defense, you know, it works really good on some teams. I mean, it's devastating to some teams like Arkansas last year. It works pretty good against some teams and some teams it doesn't work at all against. And you can't even necessarily look at, and you don't really know every time, like probably there's going to be teams that if we start doing that and we do start having success doing that, they're going to find, try to figure out ways to counter it by putting better big, you know, two big men out there. Or maybe even if, if there's a team that has three athletic, like big men, they might try to put that out there and just dominate you um, and get all your guards in foul trouble and stuff. But it'll, I don't even think you'll be able to necessarily look at a team and go, Oh, we can't do that against them. They've got, you know, two talented big men that they play all the time. Uh, cause not all big men play the same way. And sometimes, I mean, as somebody, I'm not, a, as somebody who in my own, in our own little world plays a little bit down low, <clears throat> uh, sometimes like for me personally, the, I, I have no big guys that like you put a little guy on them and it's over. They just can't do anything. I don't like having little guys guard me. No, like I, I can't, I don't, I'm not good enough with the ball. I'd rather have a big guy guard me. So I can bang into them. Well, what, and what about? I feel what like about little the, guys are always what about freaking reverse, me out. What about the reverse side of that? And then you have to guard one of them. Yeah, I mean that, that's always the give the, the the give and take, right? You'd be like, I don't know, man. They might go big and they'll beat us up, and they might. But also, the other question is, once you get an offense, can those guys guard that lineup? And usually, the answer to that is no. Yeah, and and that's and like I said, that will be the deciding factor. It'll depend. It'll depend if they have a big guy that's like, um, you know, super fleet of foot, which there there aren't very many of those. But sometimes you get that guy, like a Brazil, you know what I mean, who's fast and long, big man, and you know, then you're like, well, it's not working as good on offense because he actually can guard whoever he's trying to guard. <clears throat> but, I mean, you saw that tonight. Like it'll be like it was tonight, where they threw it out there, and. They took it. I mean, I mean, Abilene Christian's good team. I mean, as far as they, their record doesn't really show up, but like you could, they've had success in the past and like they're obviously have a good coaching staff and they, they threw it down low a couple of times and it worked. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They got Devo under there a few times and they got, they just, the matchups were weird and they didn't, it, it didn't work enough times right on that team. Like their particular situation and like I said, that's even, I mean, some of it was like, it was close to working and it scrambled around, ball got hit off the backboard a few times and you come down with the rebound. It's like, if if that goes the other way a few times, maybe you're forced out of it. It's just going to be, I think it's going to be a game time and yeah, minute to minute. It might be like, I don't know if it's not a bad starting point since we don't seem to have one. And maybe you found something to say, you know what, I'm going to try to nurture this i'm gonna see if maybe this is the default and maybe you get kicked out of it sometimes but this is maybe what you start with uh or at least yeah. try it like because man it it looked better and it wasn't just like oh the offense looks better the defense looked better like with that lineup in there it did uh i mean must said he had you know Devo was it's weird i thought he would have marked this but yet Devo played like guarding the other team's four guy and mm -hmm. you know and he did fine like it, it was fine uh, and I know that you put that – the opposite is also true. Or like you got to get those guys guarding that lineup. And, you know, you just have guys that are more comfortable with the ball in their hands, the ball moved better. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll be interested to see. I will be interested to see what he does going forward uh, you know, next week. And is he going to – I don't know. Maybe, maybe roll a lineup like that, if not that. I mean, I know he likes bringing battle off the bench, but – um i'll be i'll be yeah, I, was, I, I mean it's kind of a you know this game doesn't need probably that long of a recap it's kind of boring because it's it's it, i feel right now basically not identical but almost like i did coming out of the last game for different reasons a little bit but basically the same where last game we said well 
that was ugly. It didn't look good at times. We still haven't figured anything out lineup wise. And we have a little, we saw a little bit of hope and there's maybe reason for a spark of hope in the future because of this new player. And this game, I feel kind of the same where it's like the new player thing, still thing. I think he could be the solution. It's not a hundred percent, but like he could definitely be helpful. It looks like, I mean, I was very encouraged and still hopeful about his position. And but there was enough wrong with that game that you can't feel completely hopeful because, like you said, mm-hmm. at the end, you're like, OK, well, maybe we figured it out. Maybe this will carry on into the next game. But there was enough wrong, even in the second half, to be still be like very, very nervous and trepidatious. I mean, obviously, the first half was terrifying. It was a disaster. It was like, oh, my God, we're just terrible. And then even in the second half, it's like the comeback was great. That Those couple of minutes where we were really hot were great. But it did bog down a little bit. We let them score, come back, and like they they kept it. They kept you not being able to walk away from the game, and we couldn't, you know, we couldn't hit enough free throws. I mean, it seems like when the when we were trying to put them away, we can only shoot fifty percent. Even though our overall percentage isn't terrible, but yeah, I know one thing that you can't do is uh, it does seem like Mark's one hundred percent back, and he's good to go. He looked great. Uh, Rip Kool Aid. I, I don't think you're bringing Mark and Battle off the bench. Like, I mean, that's not like that's like that's like your two leading scorers. Like, mm-hmm. I think we, I mean, are you gonna roll both out there and start them both? Uh, try to jump on people. I don't know if he's gonna do that or not, but like, I assume at least Mark's gotta be in that starting lineup, right? Yeah, I mean, one of them, yeah, yeah. For sure, yeah. Because Mark, Mark kind of looked a little, uh, especially you know, second half, he looked a little uh, like he did against North Carolina, where you're like, okay, like uh, if if I can get you doing, if I can get that mark, uh, that that changes some stuff. Then you got Menifield Man- gets uh, is getting it, like he gets downhill better than anyone else on the on the roster, and that's a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. You know that that speed is is good. Mm-hmm. Um, he gets to the, he gets to the basket. You know, so that was good. I thought Lawson played really well tonight too. Yeah, I I, I actually was surprised he didn't play more. Mm. You know, I thought I was surprised when they how much they played Graham and Mitchell because I actually did, and I you know I mean I'm I'm Team Mitchell, but I didn't think I thought both those guys were actually surprisingly ineffective when they were in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And Lawson was the only one of those guys that like seemed didn't make a ton of mistakes and seemed pretty effective uh yeah. graham didn't do terrible he kind of had some bad luck well you know, you know like... graham, graham played 13 minutes he had seven points yeah he was he made both his he was here's here you say about graham he had seven points he made both the shots he took he made three out of four free throws which is good he had three rebounds he did he was trying to rebound i had two blocks that's all good uh he had two turnovers two fouls but like he he gave up a couple things defensively that you're like, you know, like letting a guy go by you so you can try to get the weak side, you know, the, the back end block, but you don't, and then you just give up a layup and stuff like that. Um, he was too small in everyone, uh, which I know it was annoying to you. Uh, yeah, it, it, Graham, I thought Graham, you know, I, I one of the things that was cool was like when Graham, Graham got an offensive rebound, and went back up with it and got fouled and went to the free throw line. And you could tell, like, Muss was like, it's what, because Muss is usually yelling and screaming. And you could tell he was like clapping and like, you know, saying, yeah, good job. That's it. Like, that's what he wants. He wants that so bad for him. <laughs> right. Like, that, that's what. And I mean, Joe Klein was saying it on the broadcast. Like, that's how you're going to get minutes, dude. Like, everyone knows that you get, like, you can put the ball in the hole. Like, but you, you got to do that. But not just once. Like you got to be trying to. You don't have to do it every play. No one can. You have to be trying to. Yeah, I mean, we've it, we've talked about it at nauseum. But some of it's it, he he just doesn't. He if you notice a lot of times he comes over to help and his guy scores. And now obviously when you're helping, somebody's supposed to help the helper. But it's just he doesn't help from the right 
like when, like you've as, as a defender he he basically it's like he can only focus on the ball mm-hmm. and if we got balls and on, on the guy he's guarding he does okay but if the ball is anywhere else he doesn't know where to be like p- between his man and the other guy where he can help and still get to you know, i mean if you if you sometimes you know when you're like okay he's that guy's gotten around that guy i have to help but I can tell that nobody's going to get my guy and that pass is mm-hmm. coming. And there's a way you play that where you're doing, you're not even necessarily trying, you're, you're kicking at the ball, your, your arms and you're kicking in the passing lanes. Cause you're basically on a suicide mission now. Cause you have to stop the guy that's got the ball in his hands coming towards the basket, but you're abandoning your guy. And he doesn't have any of that intuition on how to you put your body to where it seems like uh, it happens constantly where you almost feel bad for him. Cause you can tell he doesn't even probably, think that he's done anything bad defensively because he's like oh i go down here i affect that shot and then my guy tips in the rebound on effect it's like i mean it's not really totally your fault you did do the right thing you just didn't do it the right way you know what i mean yeah and um but i really want him to be awesome because now with the died here we got golden graham That's true. Somebody's gonna say somebody's gonna say golden gram. We can hold up signs with golden grams on them if he's like if he started like averaging sixteen points a game and like really yeah. being a problem. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, in closing, uh, what did you, dude? What did you think about L. Ellis starting playing four minutes, turns the ball over once, and the end? Feel bad for that guy, dude. Yeah, dude. I don't know what to do though. I mean, it wasn't like he was ter- – like, I don't know. Like, I mean, that turnover was really bad. But, I mean, just like a guy gave you a little bit of pressure and you like threw this long – like, I don't know, it was a really bad turn. Like, but like for, from your point guard, like that's not good. But, yeah, dude, my guys – I know you were on a bad team at Louisville, but, yeah, I don't know, man. You must be questioning your choices of like, what that you came here. Um, and then Menafield is like looking pretty good. So it's, it's just I feel I dude, I feel bad for anyone that like transfers in and like you know, because you know it's gonna happen every time you get that many transfers, and it's like, bro, you guys ain't all playing. Mm-hmm. Like there ain't no, no there ain't no way. Like, especially I, mean, I, felt, I, I felt bad for Vanover. Yeah. Cause like it, it became pretty clear. It's like, oh man, dude, you're just never gonna play. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's just He's, he it's because with a guy like that it's whenever it's a guy that's like cuz i don't i don't know why i don't feel as bad for pinion although i'd like to see him play but because he's such a local boy and you know it's probably a dream for him to play mm-hmm. on that team and he's the kind of guy that he could get minutes on a on a lesser team but i don't know if he would ever be he'd just be a specialist probably i don't yeah. know if unless he went to a really low level college wouldn't be like a star so it feels like I don't know, but with Vanover, he's such a weird, unique guy. Like he would be getting massive minutes and be a star on a lot of the next tier down hey, from he's us. Start, he's start, we're about to see him, dude. He's starting for Missouri. Dude, if he comes in here and fucks <laughs> us up, I'm gonna be <laughs> so upset. Have you seen have you seen him lately? Not really, no. Dude, long hair, beard. It looks like a totally different dude. Well. Not to be mean, but I'm sure that it, there's a lot of ways to improve on that. So yeah, probably... he, he looks way cooler. I'll tell you that. He looks like he looks cooler. It looks like he yeah. also is bigger. He probably doesn't, is. Probably he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, oh no, he like gained <laughs> forty pounds of muscle. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't think he's tearing it up there, but um, I know people don't care about this, but maybe they do. If you're still around. Like, let's look. Let's look at. Uh... Did you did you hear me say that I'm drinking old school, like, like a child? I'm drinking grape Kool Aid. Are you? Yeah, like a nothing, child. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's let's look at Missouri. Uh, who did they play last? Well, they lost to Seton Hall. Okay. Uh. He did not play in this game. He's oh yeah, he did. Uh, oh, he didn't start in this game though. He had four points. No, that's not. That's okay. not. 
That's not, it's not too worrying. How did you do against Kansas when they got beat by Kansas? Uh, nine points against okay. Kansas. Um, yeah. So he's not a star. He's not a star yet. No. Nope. But also, nope. but what, but what I meant too was not actually another a different SEC team. I meant like go play for Missouri Valley. Yeah. Not, yeah. not that that's bad. They're just the next tier down, obviously. Mm -hmm. And like he, you know, he'd be jacking people up. Yeah. Mm. But no, I do feel worse for like the LLS. Because well, also because you know, Pinion's a sophomore. Ellis is a senior, mm -hmm. dude. Like, this is it for him. Like he he transferred and he's done uh after this. So. Yeah, that, that that does stink. I mean, especially because he's not he's not he doesn't have the body to be a pro. Yeah. At least not I mean not in not in the NBA, maybe yeah. maybe somewhere else, but well, yeah. Here's a nice thing also, just so people re I don't know, I assume people realize this, but Menafield's a sophomore. Mm -hmm. Like so He's one of those transfers that you get to keep. I mean, you get to keep him for a while. So, like, when you watch Menafield, you're looking at, you know, someone that's going to be here for this season and two seasons after that, probably, you know. And so, what uh, was the exact circumstances that he was under that that was made it? I, I, he had it was something with grades, but it wasn't, I think it was a, an issue with, um, certain things not transferring uh over from Washington the way like smoothly like so he had um credits that didn't move over for whatever reason mm -hmm. or they were or they were trying to figure it out and I guess they got that worked out and then he was now he's able to play but he had to wait because uh he didn't have so you know I mean base obviously if you're if you're going to school over here and you're going over to school over here and then you're like hey what's your Gray's like, like, well, here's all my stuff. And they're like, well, we don't accept that. So now all of a sudden you have a big fat zero. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, that's no good. So it was something like that. But uh, he was able I can to see feel it. it. I can see it now, dude. Where he's going to turn around our season. We're going to be, you know, a four seed getting ready to go in high on everyone's list. And then the scandal is going to come out where must paid whoever it's not gonna happen to, to release him because he must went in and was like uh this isn't working i gotta have somebody else at point guard <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, no. let's figure out how to get this going uh i sure hope not all yeah. right uh so we agree uh so mark the player of the game but uh menafield is honorable mention and uh i'd love, love to see more of it i mean i'm I, it's kind of a bummer that it's gonna be a whole week yeah, when when is their next game? They play. They don't play for a while, right? Um, I thought you said it. I thought you said the it was Saturday. Is that is, is that wrong? That's New Year's Eve, though. Um, no. no, that's the day before New Year's Eve. They play again. Um, let's see here. This has been the most boring last ten minutes of a. It is, uh, but people just, you know, if you're here for it, you're here for it. Arkansas schedule. Uh, let's see. So we we play again Saturday, December 30th. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's what you're So a little over, a little over a week. Uh, and then we don't play it. And then we have a whole week off and we don't, our, we have, we start SEC play the following Saturday uh, hmm. against Auburn. Fun. So, yeah. So you got uh, NC Wilmington. Oh, yeah, well, so it'll be a little bit light uh, for the next two weeks, and then it'll be on twice yep. a week for the rest of the – all the way to through March. Yep. So. All right. All right. Well, everybody well, have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, I'm glad we didn't lose. That would have been a freaking lump of coal right down your stocking. But uh, mm -hmm. instead, you got, you know – some things to to at least be hopeful about. It is the the season of hope, and uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks gave you a little something. Where you're like, "Ooh, is that something? We'll see." But there's reason for hope, not certainty, hope. And so you mm -hmm. know you can lean into that this Christmas. All right, bro. Uh, I'll see you. All right, ya. All right man.